Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Hey, tonight I want to talk to you about what really is a game changer a game changer for every believer, for every, every Christian. It's something that's ex- exclusive to God's kids. And that is uh, prayer. Now don't click off, don't go away saying, oh, another message about prayer. I'm telling you, you need to hear this message. I promise you, it will ignite something on the inside of you. Uh, I believe uh, that it will cause you to, uh, if you're not engaged in a life of prayer, that will cause you to re-engage in a life of prayer. Again, because prayer really is something exclusive to God's people in regards to him hearing them, um, being heard by God's, uh, hearing his kids and, 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 and responding to God's kids, uh, responding to those prayers. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. So I wanna begin uh, by just sharing a, a few quotes from what I consider just a few generals of the faith, uh, generals of the faith like Ian e. Bounds, I love this, I love this quote. He said, uh, prayer should not be regarded as a duty which must be performed, but rather as a privilege to be enjoyed, but rather as a privilege to be enjoyed, a rare delight that is always revealing some new beauty. (laughs) I love that, that it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be something that is a duty, but it is a, it is a delight that we, we don't have to pray, but we get to pray to God, not just our creator, but our father. And so it should be a delight when we pray. And so here, here, here's another one. This one's by Billy Graham. Again, another general in the faith. True prayer is a way of life, not just for use in cases of emergency. I love this part. Make a habit of it. Make a habit of it. And when the need arises, you'll be in practice. <laughs> I like that. That, that. When I read that quote, it reminded me of um, uh, a, a story one of uh, my good friends told me. Um, actually, he was in our church in, in, in Laramie uh, when we pastored there. Uh, he was in the military. He and his brother both were, uh, got orders to go to Iraq. Of course, this is several years ago. And um, not long after they got in country, uh, they got to their base camp and um, they got their first mission. And so they got through with their briefing before they went on their mission. And the briefing, of course, this is what our our mission is. This is what's gonna happen. This is what we're gonna do. So at the end of the briefing, um, Michael is his name. Michael is a captain. Well, was a captain then. He, he stood up and he said, hey guys, uh, hey, before we roll uh, out of the motor pool, we'll be over to a certain spot in the motor pool, but if you'd like to come over and pray before we go on our mission, uh, you know, me and my brother will be over there. We'll, we'd love to pray with you unless we could pray together. And so he said that not very many people showed up that time. Maybe, maybe one or two other people showed up. So that they got in their vehicles and they rolled out and, 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 and went on that, that first mission um, there as they had just, again, just arrived in country. And they actually got hit. They got hit with uh, quite a bit of small arms fire and, and, and it was like a hey, welcome to Iraq kind of a thing. So a few days later, they got another, another mission. They went into their briefing. After they got through with the briefing, they said he gave the same opportunity. He said, hey, look, um, <clears throat> me and my brother will be over a certain point in the motor pool. And uh, before we roll out, if anybody wants to come over and pray, we'll be there. We'd love to pray with you before we go. This time, guess what happened? <laughs> there was a crowd. He said it grew, <clears throat> it grew by leaps and bounds between the first time and the second time. Why? Well, because the, the, a lot of these guys uh, had, had, had uh, really, their eyes were open as to where they were at and that it was very, very serious. But a point that I want to make there was Michael and his brother, Ross, uh, they were brought up praying. They were brought up, their mom and dad taught them very well. Everything and anything that you do, you always cover it with prayer. That was just a habit that they had. So therefore, it was just natural for them to give that opportunity, to give others the opportunity to join them. And, but, but, but for some, for some people, um, they only pray uh, in an emergency type situation. But again, I like what, what Billy Graham said, look, you need, we need to be praying all the time. It needs to be a habit because that, that's a healthy habit for us as Christians. It needs to be a habit because when those difficult times come, when those tense times come, those difficult seasons that we could be facing, when they do arise, when they do happen, you want to be in practice. And so I, I, really, I really love what Billy Graham said about that. And, and another, another quick point uh, about the, the McGee's, the, the gentleman that I was talking about earlier, they didn't lose a single man. They, they, and they got hit more, like twice as much as the unit that they replaced. And so they got hit twice as much, but they did not lose a single person. I believe 
It was because of, of, uh, of prayer. Here's another one by John Wesley. Again, another general in the faith. I love this one. God does nothing but by prayer. Now he's not talking about God praying. He's talking about God's people praying. Listen to this again. John Wesley, God does nothing but by prayer and everything with it, everything with it. Prayer is the number one factor of a normal person. It's the number one factor of a normal person that can experience abnormal seasons in their life. And what I mean by abnormal, I'm talking about good abnormal. I'm talking about God kinds of seasons. And you know, a season can be a few minutes, a, a, a season can be a few months, but, but prayer is the number one factor. It is the number one factor that, that just a normal person, just a normal person can experience abnormal. And I mean that in the, and I mean that in the context of it, it's, it's a good thing, okay? Abnormal seasons uh, in, in, in their life. I want you to listen to what James says is James really is speaking about what I just said in, in that statement about prayer being the number one factor. James chapter five, verse 17. It says, Elijah was a, a human as we are. Stop right there. Elijah, you probably, if you've read the Bible, you've been around church, you've probably heard about Elijah. Elijah was a prophet used by God. And, and, but I like, I, like, I like the picture that James uh, paints here. He said, Elijah was a human just like we are. Now, now that, that should encourage you because we, we, can, we can look at folks like Elijah and, and if you know anything about Elijah's life, wow, I mean, God used him in incredible ways. I mean, in amazing ways. But yet he was still a human and he was, he was putting us on the same level with, 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 with Elijah. But, but, but again, what we can do is when we, when we read things, we hear things like that, we're like, oh no, I could never be like Elijah. But no, that's not true. Um, um, uh, James said Elijah was just, like, just a regular person. Like we're just regular people. But you can say, but Elijah, Elijah had a call on his life. Uh, God had a very special purpose for Elijah. Well, let me, let me help you with something. God's got a call on your life. Yeah, and, and Elijah's call was no more important than your call. And, 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 and Elijah, uh, just like Elijah, uh, God's got a purpose for, 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 for your life. He had a purpose for Elijah and he's got a purpose for you. Listen, here's the beautiful thing about God. God loves to use human beings. God loves just to use normal, regular folks. I believe one of the reasons he likes to do that is because then we can't give the credit to any other person but him, right? And, and so again, I love the way that James sets this up. And it really includes us. It puts us on the same playing field with a mighty man of God, a wonderful person that God used in incredible ways. And here, I wanna say this, God wants to use you in incredible ways. Listen to me, and prayer is a part of that. Prayer is a part of God using you in an amazing way. So let's go back to that. Let's go back, James chapter five, verse 17. It's Elijah was human as we are, watch this. And yet when he prayed earnestly, and yet when he prayed earnestly, so you got just uh, uh, Elijah, human just like we are. Here's what he did. He prayed. Just a normal guy with a call that God, a plan that God had for his life. We're just like that. We're just normal people that God has called and God's got a plan for our life. But watch, watch, watch what, watch, watch what uh, James points out. Elijah prayed. And here's what, here's what I want to point out to you tonight. We can pray too, listen, and we can get results in our life if we will just be dedicated to prayer, just like, just like Elijah was. I encourage you to go back and study Elijah's life and you'll see that Elijah just didn't pray one time. Elijah had a habit of praying and we too need to develop that habit of, of prayer. And I know we got the new year coming up and you're like, hey, that's gonna be my new year's resolution. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, get in, I'm gonna be focused more on prayer because I wanna be used by God. Listen, don't wait. Don't wait until the beginning of the year. Start now, purpose in your heart that you are going to be a person of prayer. So let's go back and read it again. Elijah was a human as we are. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. That is an abnormal thing. So normal is a, uh, uh, excuse me, Elijah was a normal person. He prayed and something abnormal happened. Something abnormal happened. Watch this. Then... The normal person, Elijah, the human Elijah, verse 18, when he prayed again, there again, there's, he didn't just pray one time, he had a lifestyle of prayer. But when he prayed again, the sky uh, sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crop. The title of this message as we're talking about prayer tonight is <laughs> be like Elijah. 
Be like Elijah, because here again, you're a normal person. You are a normal person, just like uh, Elijah. You're just a, a human being, just like Elijah was, but you can experience abnormal seasons. And I mean that in a good way, context of that is in a good way because of prayer. So I'm gonna give you a few thoughts about prayer uh, this evening. So let's dive into this. Number one, uh, prayer should always, prayer should always, always, always be a priority. It, uh, prayer should always be a priority. Listen, all of us have priorities in life. All of us have things that are very valuable to us. And there are some things that are more valuable than others. Well, I can tell you that if you look at your light, uh, a list of priorities, things that you value, things that are important to you, prayer really should be up at the top. Prayer really should be up at, 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 at the top. And here's why. <clears throat> there has always been a connection between God's purpose and um, his people's prayers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that again. There's always been a connection. There's always been a connection between God's purpose being manifested, being realized, being seen in the earth. There's a connection between his purpose and his people's prayer life, his people's prayer. That's both Old Testament, New Testament. You can see that there is a connection between God's purpose uh, unfolding in the earth and God's people's prayers. And let me just say it this way. And, and this is the reason it's so important. Prayer has always been a conduit. Listen, prayer has always been a conduit between heaven and earth. God is in heaven, we are in the earth, okay? Jesus is at the right hand of God and in and, and heaven, and where are we? We are in the earth to fulfill his plan and to, to be uh, really a partnership with him and representatives of him, uh, for him and of him in, in the earth. Thank God, thank the Father, thank you, Jesus, that we have the Holy Spirit that's in the earth with us to empower us, to help us, even in the area of prayer. We could talk a lot about that. Uh, but, but, but prayer has always been that conduit. It's always been that connection between Jesus in heaven, between Father God in heaven and, 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 and the earth. So one day Jesus is teaching on prayer. Jesus is teaching on prayer. And it's uh, in Matthew chapter six, this, this that I'm referencing right now is in Matthew chapter six. It's referenced to other places in the gospel. But Jesus is teaching on prayer. And it's a great teaching on prayer. I encourage you to go back and study this out. It's a great teaching on prayer. <clears throat> but again, uh, listen to what he said. And again, the context, he's talking about prayer, right? And we're talking about the conduit, the prayer is the conduit between heaven and earth. And his, that connection in which God's purpose always flows really is built or is the conduit of prayer. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter six, verse 10. This is the, the Passion Translation. It says, manifest your kingdom. So Jesus is saying, pray this way, all right? So he's saying, this is the way you wanna pray to God, pray to the Father, He's saying, Father, manifest your kingdom realm and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on the earth. Father, manifest, in other words, bring it to fruition, manifest your kingdom realm, the, the heavenly realm, and, and, and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled in the earth just as it is in heaven, just as, as, it, as, it, as it is in heaven. Again, the context of that statement was prayer. And he said, we should make that a prayer that we include in our prayer life. But the light that he's shedding there is the fact that there is a conduit that is established when God's people prays, when God's people pray in the earth, there is a conduit that is established with heaven itself. And that God's purpose flows through that conduit. That's the reason that we place here at Life United such a heavy emphasis on personal prayer, but we also place a very strong emphasis on our corporate prayer. Uh, we gather the first Monday, first Monday night here at Life United, and we pray together corporately. Why? Because we believe that there is a connection between our prayer life individually, but listen to me, uh, also corporately, and you go, well, can I choose to can I do one or the other? No, you need to do both. <laughs> because there's, there's tremendous power in agreement when you come together with believers there's tremendous power that takes place when there's agreement. And I could talk a lot about that, but I gotta keep moving. But we place a, a tremendous value. That's the reason we have first Monday prayer of every month. And look, I encourage you, we're getting ready to start the new year. I encourage you, make that a priority. Establish a, a, a line in the sand, so to speak, that said, you know what? It says me and my family, or if you don't have a family, just be here. I'm gonna be, be at Monday night prayer every Monday night during 
2022. Make that a priority. I promise you, it is a life-changing uh, experience. It is a game changer because life, um, excuse me, prayer absolutely will change things in your life. And, and, and you say, well, are we going to come just pray about my needs? Well, we may pray about your needs, but the truth is we're going to pray about others. But here's what I've learned about prayer is that when you pray for others and you, you intercede for others, what happens is, is that, that it opens the door for God to open that windows of heaven in your life and to move in your life. And, and so, so uh, again, there is a conduit that is connected to prayer. So it needs to be a priority between heaven and earth. There's that conduit and that conduit is prayer. And, and, and so this is why, this is why that prayer should be a priority for every believer because we wanna be used by God. That's the will of God. We want to, uh, for his purpose to be manifested in our life, manifested in our church. And, and we want his plan, his purpose, he's in heaven, but we want it manifested in the earth. Again, and prayer is the conduit that allows that to happen. Here's another scripture that talks about priority. Listen to this one. First Timothy 2, 1, it says, I urge you first of all to pray. I urge you, Paul speaking here to Timothy, a young pastor, I urge you first of all, remember priority, first of all, to pray for all people, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and watch, watch this, this is is an important part and give thanks for them. So pray for folks, make that a first priority and give thanks for them. Uh, I, I, th- I think that, I think that the, the, the principle of the first is so, so important in so many areas of our life, but especially in prayer. So let me, let me just give you this statement and I, I think it will drive this point home. Prayer must be our first response instead of our last resort. Prayer's gotta be our first response instead of our last resort. Sometimes we, we go to the, we go to the, uh, we, 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 um, we look at other options. We, we explore other options when things happen or, uh, you know, we, we, we need something to move or something to break in a positive way or doors to open and, or we're faced with something that's bigger than us. Uh, sometimes we have a tendency to explore these other options. So maybe, maybe the first option is Google. <laughs> we just Google, let me go find a YouTube video that talks about this. Well, those things can be helpful at times, but I'm gonna tell you, the number one thing, the best thing that will help is to pray first, pray first. Here's another, here's another scripture that talks about priority, the priority of prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything. Wow, what a great truth there. Don't worry about anything. He didn't say almost anything. He said, don't worry about anything. Watch this, instead, so instead of worrying, <laughs> Do this. You say, well, Pastor John, what is this? Well, let's finish up this thought that he's given us here. Instead, pray about everything. Pray about everything. Don't go to Google first. Don't go to you two first. Don't go to a friend first. You know, don't go to necessarily you know, mom first, dad first. Sometimes, really all the time, you just need to go to God first. And instead of worrying about it, just take the time that you could, you would be worrying replace that time of worry with prayer. Listen, because worry will destroy you. Watch this. But prayer will create that conduit for God's will and God's purpose to be manifested in your life and in that particular situation that you could be worrying about. Hey, in the, hey, in the chat right now, once you just put in there, I'm not going to worry, I'm going to pray. <laughs> I'm not going to worry, I'm going to pray. Here's another one you could put in, 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 in the chats, right, the chat room right now. Put, put I'm going to pray first. I'm going to pray first. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run to God and I'm going to pray first. But you know, as I was praying about this sermon and putting together this teaching, I thought, you know what? I need to open up and kind of unpack this first point even a little bit more, the pray first point. I need to open that up a little bit more because we go, okay, I gotta pray first, but how do you do that? And so, so uh, as I unpack that, listen very closely. Our first, re- our first response should not be um, really what should I pray really, nor should it be how should I pray because there are different ways that we can pray and we can talk a lot about that. But really, our very first thought, our very first step is and should be, what does God's word say about whatever it is? What does God's word say? What does God's word say? What is a promise or promises? 
What are some, what's a promise are some promises that I have in God's word concerning this very specific thing. What's the promise? What's God's word? I, the first thing I wanna do is get God's word on it. Get God's promise, get God's truth. And here's why. God's word gives you a solid foundation to build your prayers upon. Remember, we talked about that conduit a moment ago. It, so, so God's word, God, God's promises really help, help um, create a solid foundation or a solid place to build that conduit, to build that connection between heaven, God, and yourself in this season and the moment that you're in. So always, number one, listen, pray first, but really you wanna boil that down even more. You wanna go, all right, number one, what does God say about this? What does God say about this uh, situation? Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter seven, talking about a solid foundation of God's word being creating, <coughs> excuse me, a solid foundation. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, therefore, um, again, this is uh, Matthew 7, 24 and 25. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, everyone who hears the words of mine, but not just to hear only, but they initiate, they put them into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock, something solid, something stable. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall. Watch this, because its foundation was on the rock. Listen to me very closely. Uh, a prayer life, listen, your prayer life becomes rock solid. Listen, your prayer life becomes rock solid when your prayer life is built on the word of God. Your prayer life becomes rock solid. I mean, it's, it, it becomes stable, it becomes solid. You gain confidence in your prayer life when your prayer life is established on the word of God. That's the reason I said earlier, the very first thing that you've got to do before you initiate the prayer is you identify what God says about whatever that you are praying about. Let me give you an example. Uh, pastor right now is in Africa and he's been there for several days now. Um, and, and before he left, he, he mentioned something and, um, about him being gone. And I, I, I immediately knew we need to pray for him every day. And so I, I just gave some instructions uh, that, to the staff that every day at a certain time, we would be praying for Pastor Sam. And uh, we also, of course, gave that to, to the church and mentioned that to the church. And we're so thankful that you guys have, have been praying. He's, he's wrapping up his, uh, his assignment there. We'll be home just in a few days. And, and, uh, but but uh, when, when it was my chance, when it was my turn to pray, one of the, f the first things that I did, the very first things that I did was that I said, okay, God, uh, as I'm praying for pasture, uh, I, I, I gotta have a scripture. So the scripture that came to my heart was Isaiah 54, 17, where it says that there is no weapon formed against you that will prosper. That tongues may rise against you, but God would put them down. But I love the very beginning of that, that promise. It says that there's no weapon formed against you that will prosper. So that became one of the foundations for my prayer and really our prayer in regards to pastor. We pray, Father, we believe there's no weapon formed against him that's gonna prosper, spirit, soul, or body. I believe you're gonna keep him, you're gonna protect him, but you're gonna watch over him. That though a weapon may be formed, it will not manifest. It will not be seen. And though if it is seen, it's not going to harm him, not gonna hurt him, not gonna slow him down in any way. So we began to pray and I began to pray over that and use that as the foundation for uh, my prayer in regards to Pastor Sam. So I encourage you, uh, don't forget, don't forget about um, stopping before you pray and identifying the scripture that you're gonna stand on because it creates, it creates stability and confidence in your prayer life. Let me go on with verse 15 in John, uh, excuse me, let, let me, let me give you a scripture. I'm sorry, let me give you a scripture that really uh, proves that point out even more about the scripture, taking God's promise and praying that. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, we are sure that if we ask anything that he, that, that, that he wants us to have, talking about God, that he'll hear us. That we're sure that if we ask anything that he wants us to have, well, how do you know that? How do you know what he wants us to have? Well, go to the word, go to the promises, go to the truth. That's how you know for sure that it's God's will for us to have it. Like it was God's will for God to protect Pastor Sam. That's the reason we went to the word, we went to the promise and we began to stand on that. Uh, let's, say, let's say healing, all right? Let's say, let's say that you're standing for healing. Well, I would say go to 1 Peter 2, 24. 
Uh, 23 and 24, that's a great place. That's the scripture says that by his wounds, that by the stripes of Jesus, by his stripes, by his wounds, or because of the stripes that he took on his body, that we are healed, that we are healed. So there we know it's God's purpose, it's God's heart for us, it's his desire for us to be healed. And so that's really how we align our prayer with him, is through the word, through his truth, through the promises. And so, and, and listen, so, so we can be confident that um, we ask anything that he wants us to have, the promises give us that, then he's, he's gonna hear us, right? He's gonna hear it. It's gonna be, be that when, when God hears that, that faith-filled, that promise-filled prayer come to him and it hits his ear, so to speak, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be very familiar to him because he goes, that's my heart, that's my desire. <laughs> so there's a line between desires, right? We, we desire to God to move in our life in a certain way. He desires for, to move in our lives in a certain way. And we know that because of the promises, God's truth, God's word. But watch verse 15, talking about confidence and having a rock solid prayer life and being confident in it. And, and, if we, and if we are sure he hears us when we ask, watch this, then we can be sure he will give us what we ask for. We can be what? We can be sure. That's confidence. That is absolute confidence. And so I, I, again, I encourage you when you pray first, Go there, that's my heart, that's my intent, that's what I'm gonna do. But you, you stop, you pause for a second, okay, before I begin to pray, I'm gonna get my promise, our promises. I'm, and that's what I'm gonna build the foundation of my prayers on the word of God. All right, so prayers, number one, for every believer should be a priority. Here, here's the next one. Prayer initiates, prayer initiates a process. Prayer initiates a process. <laughs> I know sometimes people are like, no, don't, don't click, don't click off because you know, typically most of us are not process oriented, right? We want results now, right? <laughs> we, want, we want our stuff now. Well, listen, uh, we live in a culture, we live in a world where we can get stuff pretty much instantaneous, a lot of things, pretty much instantaneous. But listen, we function in a kingdom, the kingdom of God, that's not instantaneous. And we've got to accept that. As I've said before, um, we've got to get on God's page and not expect God to get on our page. And this is especially true in the area of prayer because prayer initiates a process Watch this, but it produces abnormal results. And I mean that in a good way. Abnormal, I mean that in a good way. So it initiates a process. Prayer initiates a process, but it produces abnormal results. Go back to, I'm gonna go back to James 5, but I'm gonna go to verse 16. It says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so you may be healed. So you may be healed. Watch this part. The earnest prayer of a righteous person, the earnest what? The earnest Prayer of a righteous person has great power. Prayer has great power, watch this, and produces wonderful results. Listen, prayer initiates the process that produces wonderful results. Uh, that's what James says James in James 5, 16. Well, Jesus also talked about, listen, Luke chapter eight, Jesus talks about, a kingdom and how God's kingdom works and that there is a process to things. He talked about the, the sower that had going out, had gone out and he had sown the seed and he said, he put the seed in the ground and next there was like the stalk that came up and he said, then next came uh, the, the head of corn, excuse me, the head of wheat on top of the stalk. So the emphasis and the point that he was making there is that in his kingdom, and in his realm and the way that he works, there's, there are processes. Again, the seed, then the stalk, and then the head of wheat. And that was what Jesus was talking about, that there, there's a process to things. There's a, there's a process in regards to prayer. And, and, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about this in just a moment about being persistent, but I want you to get that. I want you to get that. You have to settle in your heart and settle in your mind that, that prayer is part of a process. It initiates, I can say it this way, it initiates the process of God manifesting things in the world through his kids, through his, uh, the prayers of his kids that are built and based on the word of God. 
So again, there's a process, but let me, let me take just a little bit of a side step right here and just pay close attention to this. Uh, there, there can be, I mean, how can I say that? There can be some things that abort that process. There can be something, you gotta hear this. There can be some things that abort that process, the process of that, that prayer, your, your prayer uh, manifesting things from God and from, from the throne of God and from Jesus. There, there can be some things that can abort that process. And I'm gonna give you one very important one. It's found in Mark chapter 11, verses, verses 24 and 25, where Jesus is talking about prayer. He says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you, uh, whatever you ask for in prayer, that, that really connects with 1 John uh, uh, 5, 14 and 15 that we read a moment ago. That, therefore, I tell you that whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it. Believe that you have received it because if it's built, a, if it's established on the word of God, if it's established on the promise of God, you can believe that you receive it because it's already been promised to you, okay? Just gotta process it through prayer. You gotta process that through prayer, but pay close attention to this and it will be yours. It'll be yours. Well, that in itself really shows a process. The, you, you, you ask in prayer that you believe that you received it, it'll be yours, process. But watch, it's talking about things that can abort that process destroy the process. Verse 25, and when you stand praying, because he's talking about prayer there, if you, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. Forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. <laughs> wow. Listen, let me just say this. You can have your grudge or you can have God's answer, but you can't have both. You can hold on to your grudge against somebody, or you can have God's answer to your prayer, but you can't have both of them. So there's a process, there's a process, but listen, you have to make sure you keep your heart pure to keep the process moving forward, to keep the process moving forward. I'm convinced that the majority of prayers do not get answered because of that right there. I'm convinced of that, that people would rather hold on to their bitterness, people would rather hold on to their grudge. They would rather have that than the answer to God's God's answer to their, to their life. They would rather have, have this one, the grudge, more than they would God's goodness and manifestation of his, of his answer. Here, here's, here's my last point, wrapping up with this one. Prayer has got to be persistent. And these two last two points really connect very strongly, very directly. Prayer must be persistent. Listen, the process can take one month. It could take one minute or it could take one year. Let me just say this. I probably just lost half of you. Please come back, come back, come back. Don't click away. Because again, we want the instantaneous thing. But listen, the process sometimes can take a minute. Sometimes it can take a week. Sometimes it can take a, a, a month. And sometimes it could take a year. But let me just say this. If, if that process goes a little bit longer, wouldn't you agree that it's worth hanging in there? It's worth being persistent. It's worth staying with it. I mean, it, wouldn't it be worth it just to hang in there and stay with it. Because sometimes there is this gap between the time that we stand in regards to our prayer on the word of God. There is a gap between that and the time that we see that manifest. And listen, I don't always know the answer as to why. I, I, I really don't. Because I've seen things happen real quickly in regards to things that Sandy and I have uh, agreed upon and agreed for, agreed for. I always seen things happen just very quickly, but sometimes, you know, and I'll talk about this in a moment, sometimes it's been, it's been a, a longer span of time. But I can tell you the times that it was a longer span of time, two things happened when we, we were thankful that we stuck with it, but then we would also look back and go, oh, I see. <laughs> I see why that God maneuvered and he worked and he moved this way. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but just stay with me. Listen, again, there's a, there's a, di there's a time between when you stand, there can be a gap between the time you stand and the time that you see the answer to prayer. You can see this very plainly in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel was a man of God that was used by God in an incredible way. But listen, Daniel was just a normal person, just a normal human, just like Elijah was, just like you are, just like I am. Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. It says, then he said, don't be afraid. This is an angel has uh, spoke to Daniel. Daniel has prayed about something and then he's getting, he's getting the response. He's getting the answer. 
But I want you to watch this, talking about the gap. So Daniel's prayed, he's getting the answer from an angel. Uh, then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you began to pray, since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before our God, your request has been heard in heaven and I have come to answer your prayer. So he said, since the first day, in other words, God heard you day one. It's not that God didn't hear you, Daniel. He heard you, man. But watch this next part. Verse 13, but for 21 days, the spirit, for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, this is so cool. Then Michael, one of the other, one of the uh, archangels came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit uh, prince of the kingdom of Persia. But basically he was saying, here I am, I got here. So it took some time, but listen, Daniel got the answer. But Daniel stayed with it. He was persistent in the gap. And if I brought Daniel out right here, right now, I promise you, he would say it was worth hanging in there. It was worth staying persistent and being persistent. But listen, I want to remind you of a couple of things again, as we close that you got to remember this. When you're in the gap, keep an open mind. When you're in that gap, keep an open mind. Listen, and again, I, I mentioned it before, I'm gonna mention it again. Here's where you got to keep an open mind because God's schedule and your schedule most likely are not going to sync. God's schedule, you gotta keep an open mind. Uh, if it doesn't happen when I think it should, matter of fact, I, I would encourage you don't even do that. Don't even put a time frame on it. Just, just, just stand on God's promise. You continue to pray out God's promise. You continue to be thankful for God's promise through prayer and in prayer. And, and really don't put a time limit on it, right? You just, just thank God for it. Because I, I promise you what happens often is that if you put a time limit on it and it goes past the time, you just get disappointed and throw in the towel. But I believe that a lot of people throw in the towel way too soon. They just don't stick with prayer long enough. They don't hang in there long enough. I remember, again, I've been uh, healed within just, man, minutes of praying. There was a time in Romania, I drank some water in this remote village. I knew I shouldn't have drank the water. It was just some coffee. And by the time I got home uh, to our apartment, I'm talking, I was sick. I'm, I mean, sick, I'm so sick that, that I, just, I just had to get Sandy to pray for me. We, we, 1 Peter 2, 24, and all I could do was lay there and say, Jesus, Jesus, I was sick. And we prayed and just stayed with it for about 20 minutes. And after about 20 minutes, I promise you, it was like, boom. It was, it was a miraculous thing. I felt God's strength come into my life. That, that, that horrible sickness just left my body. And I set up and I told Sandy, I said, I'm good, I'm fine. She said, well, praise God. But listen to me. And then, but there are other things that Sandy and I have prayed for and, and agreed upon, stood for, for. We're still standing on some things. And we've been praying about and over things for a year or sometimes even two years and we're standing and believing. But here's what we've learned. It's worth it to stay persistent. And here's another thing I would remind you of in regards to when you're in the gap, keeping an open mind. Listen, the way he works this time may not be the way he works, um, excuse me, the way he worked the last time may not be the way that he works this time or the way that he worked in somebody else's life that were in similar circumstances. God may not work that same way in yours. Follow this. Because what happens is, is that your focus can go all the way over here and you go, I know God's gonna do it this way. Listen, that's none of your business as to how God does it. Your part is just to believe that he will. His part is to believe, excuse me, his part is to unfold the answer and bring the answer and manifest that answer in his way according to his wisdom. Because here's what you've got to understand. God's a lot smarter than you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His wisdom is superior to your wisdom. You may think, well, this is the wisest way for God to do it. But see, he sees things from a completely different perspective than you, right? He sees things from a completely different view than you do. So he can look at it and go, well, no, I know that. I know you think that's, that's the smart way. That's the wise way to do this, but I'm gonna do it this way. And I promise you, when it happens, you can look at that moment and you can go, you know what? It's not late at all. And I'm glad that he worked it this way. Uh, and you can look back and you, you, you can just go, oh, wow, I see why he did that. So when you're in the gap, you got to keep an open mind. You've got to keep an open heart. You got to stay with it. You've got to make sure that when you're in the gap, do 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18, where it says, always be joyful. Always be joyful. Even though you may not feel like it, be joyful. I like verse 17, never stop praying. When you're in the gap, Always be joyful, never stop praying. So what do I do, Pastor John? You just keep praying, keep saying, do the next part, be thankful in all circumstances. 
Not for the circumstances, but because you're praying, be thankful that the answer that you're standing on and standing for is coming. You can be thankful for it. For this is God's will for you who belong to Jesus Christ. Last scripture, I promise this is it. Second Chronicles 16, nine. I want you to get this, right? I want you to get this. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Imagine this right now, the eyes of the Lord, he's just constantly looking, looking over all the different continents, looking over all the different nations and all the different dialects and all the different people that are everywhere, the different tribes and uh, everywhere he's looking, he's just searching. And I like this part. Looking across the whole earth, watch this next part. To show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. You know what that's a picture of to me? That's a picture of prayer. That he's looking, he's watching, he's waiting on somebody to pray. And the truth is, if you and me will just determine in our heart that we will make prayer a priority. And we can do that because Elijah prayed and things happen. We are no different than Elijah. Matter of fact, we've got a better covenant than Elijah does. We've got better access than Elijah did. We've got better promises than Elijah did. So we've got an advantage really over Elijah. And so I encourage you, be like Elijah, be like him and pray and make it a habit because it is a game changer if you will just stay with it. We love you, we bless you, and I wanna pray for you right now. Father, we come to you right now in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And I know there are individuals that life could be great for them right now, but they are also right now because of this message, they're having this stirring, they're having, you're hearing you say, hey, life's good, but let's pray, let's, let's talk, let's, let's spend time together every day. Because God, we know that there are good days, but good seasons, but there are also challenging days and challenging seasons that are to come. And we wanna be ready for those. Not that we dread them, we just wanna be prepared. We wanna have a healthy prayer life in place. But Father, there are also individuals that are hearing this message and they're facing some difficult times. They're facing some difficult challenges. And so uh, Father, as they reach out towards you, and they begin to stand on your promises concerning whatever it is that they're facing. And they begin to pray out your promises. God, I believe that the eyes, your eyes that are searching, your ears that are open, gonna, gonna be like a, just like a laser. You're gonna hear, you're gonna focus in on them and you're gonna hear from them. And God, I believe that you're gonna move in their life in a supernatural way. God, that, that these individuals that are standing, that they'll just realize that they're no different than Elijah. They ask, Elijah asked for things and you responded. They ask for things and you respond because they're asking according to your will, which is found in your word. So God, I believe that as we all stand, we're, we're persistent, we hang in there, that we'll see the manifestation of your goodness. We'll see the manifestation of your promise as we pray. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And everybody that agrees says great big, amen. Hey, God bless you. We love you and we will see you soon. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.